Tyler did not like long bus rides, but a trip to the zoo was worth the discomfort. As the bus bounced over speed bumps, Tyler imagined he had the ability to turn animals to glass, freezing them in awkward moments. A polar bear slipping on a banana, a lion in the middle of an epic sneeze, or a giraffe with its long tongue wrapped around a branch. Before Tyler could finish his daydream, the bus screeched to a stop and the children flew toward the entrance to the zoo. The zoo was known for its amphibians and reptiles exhibit. Inside, children pressed their faces against thick panes of glass, each struggling to get a glimpse of their favorite snake or lizard. Tyler didn't like crowds, so he was content to hang back and watch a tiny frog making tiny hops in its tiny enclosure. It seemed to be jumping in a pattern, repeating it over and over. Suddenly, the frog turned and looked right at Tyler. Tyler's attention was pulled deeper into the amphibian's eyes, which glowed like lightning, and suddenly Tyler heard the frog speaking directly to his mind. "'Your friends are in danger,' said the frog. Tyler stepped back. "'What? Who's in danger? How can you speak to me?' he stammered. "'I'll explain later. Right now, you need to go to the door and pull that fire alarm,' urged the frog. "'Why would I do that?' Tyler thought. "'Because if you don't, one of your classmates is about to die,' said the frog. Tyler knew that he would get in trouble for pulling the fire alarm and that nobody would ever believe that a frog told him to do it. But if the frog was right and someone was about to die, then he had no choice. So he pulled the alarm. Flashing lights strobed in time with screaming dissonant alarm. Tyler was the first one out of the building, followed by dozens of students, teachers, and other people visiting the zoo. In the distance, he could see a golf cart racing toward him with an angry-looking security guard. "'Who pulled the alarm?' demanded the security guard. Tyler knew there were security cameras, and if he didn't speak now, he'd just be in more trouble when they found out. "'I did,' said Tyler, raising his hand so the guard could see him in the crowd. "'Why?' "'What did you see?' asked the guard. Tyler struggled to think of an answer. He couldn't tell the guard that a frog had telepathically told him to pull the alarm so that someone wouldn't die. "'Tell him you saw a snake outside of its cage,' came a voice to Tyler's mind. "'Who is this? You don't sound like the frog,' thought Tyler. "'I'm a ladybug on your shoulder. Tell the officer you saw a snake get free,' coaxed the ladybug." There was a snake on the ground, Tyler said to the officer. What kind of snake? questioned the officer. I don't know. I just saw it and ran away, Tyler replied. The officer mumbled something into the microphone on his shoulder, then entered the reptiles and amphibians building. Inside, a small girl lay on the floor, whimpering in pain. Help! she cried. A snake bit me! I'm going to help you. Where is the snake now? asked the guard taking a hooked tool from his pack and extending it several feet. The girl pointed to the darkest corner of the room. I've got a little girl with a snake bite. Need a paramedic, said the guard into his shoulder microphone. The guard approached the snake, holding the hooked tool in one hand and a flashlight in the other. The snake hissed and tried to strike, but was too far away. Carefully, the guard used the tool to lift the snake and return it to the open enclosure where it belonged. Is it safe to come in? came a voice from the guard's shoulder microphone. Affirmative, the snake is back in its cage. Come on in, the guard replied. A paramedic entered and rushed to the little girl. Hi there, my name is Steve and I'm going to help you. What's your name? asked the paramedic. I'm Allison, replied the girl. Am I going to die? No, you're going to be okay, the paramedic answered in a soothing tone. You don't know that? said the exhausted little girl, then closed her eyes and passed out. Another paramedic entered with a rolling stretcher and helped the first lift Allison onto it. What kind of snake was that? the second paramedic inquired. Looks like it was a viper, replied the guard. Do you have the antivenom? Yes. It's a good thing we got here fast. She's already going stiff, noted the paramedic. Whoever pulled that alarm may have saved her life. The paramedics exited the building and loaded Allison into the ambulance, then drove away. "'This exhibit is closed!' yelled the guard. 
Motioning for the crowd to disperse, Tyler began to walk away, the ladybug still on his shoulder. Wait, you need to go back, insisted the ladybug. No, thank you. I'd rather keep my distance from deadly snakes, said Tyler. Frog won't let him harm you. Frog just needs to talk to you, insisted the ladybug. No, I've had enough adventures for one day, snapped Tyler, waving away the ladybug. The ladybug flew away, but moments later Tyler heard buzzing. He batted the air again, thinking it was the ladybug, but when he looked at his shoulder, he saw at least a dozen giant hornets all over his right arm. Go back to the exhibit and my friends will be on their way, said the ladybug, now resting on the top of Tyler's copper hair. I think I'll go see my friend the frog, Tyler thought uncomfortably, walking slowly back to the reptiles and amphibians building. Tyler entered the empty amphibians and reptiles building where his classmate Allison had been bitten by a viper. The lights in each creature's enclosure created an eerie glow, and it took a moment for Tyler to adjust to the dim light. Welcome back, Tyler, said the familiar voice of the poison dart frog. I told you I would explain how I can speak directly to your mind, and I always keep my promises. When you entered earlier, I could sense a power in you that is very rare. I did a short incantation. To you it looked like little hops, to create a link between our minds. You completed the spell by tracing the shape of my hops with your finger. This opened your mind to communication with the small creatures of this world. That's pretty cool, but I don't think you would have had hornets drive me back here just to explain why we can talk to each other, said Tyler. You're right. I need your help with a little project. That snake over there, the one who bit your classmate, he's been causing problems for quite some time, and you have the power to stop him, said the frog. Are you serious? How? inquired Tyler. By turning him to glass, of course. All you need to do is temple your fingers together and think of the heat it would take to turn sand into glass. When you feel the heat form between your palms, Turn them toward the animal you want to change to glass, and it will happen, said the frog. Tyler templed his fingers and felt heat intensify between his palms. This isn't something to do casually, cautioned the frog. It can be rather painful for both you and the creature you turn to glass. Does it kill them? asked Tyler, a worried look crossing his face. No, they don't die. Their essence is simply suspended for a time. It all depends on how hard you push. A small effort will suspend the creature for a few minutes. An intense effort can suspend an animal for years, explained the frog. And you want me to do this to the snake? questioned Tyler. Yes. That snake killed more than a dozen people before he was captured, and he almost killed your classmate today. We must put an end to his bloodlust. Turn him to glass, Tyler. Tyler walked to the viper's enclosure and templed his fingers, imagining the snake was made of sand. The viper must have known it was in danger and shifted uncomfortably in its cage. Tyler could feel the heat begin to burn his hands and quickly turned his palms toward the viper. Slowly, the heat melted the glass of the cage until a small hole had opened. Suddenly, the viper shot forward, mouth opened wide with enormous fangs. Tyler closed his eyes, his hands still outstretched to freeze the snake. As the viper passed through the hole in its enclosure, it slowed down, stopping less than an inch from Tyler's palms. The snake had turned to glass. Tyler opened his eyes and saw the glass serpent. He looked at his hands, still glowing orange from the effort. Emblazoned on his palms were the words, Frog Lies. The words quickly faded and his hands started to feel normal again. Thank you for your help, Tyler, cheered the frog. Now we have one less vicious animal to worry about. Tyler couldn't help but feel that something was wrong, but he didn't dare examine the feeling while Frog was there reading his thoughts. Tyler ran from the building and brushed off his head and shoulders to make sure the ladybug was gone too. He found a bathroom where he closed the door and caught his breath. Why would Frog lie, and what was he lying about? Or was he lying at all? Could he trust the final words of a snake who nearly bit him? Tyler was frustrated, 
and the whole day seemed surreal. Maybe it was all a daydream, and he was still on the bus. The only way to prove he wasn't daydreaming was to see if his classmate Allison really had been bitten by a snake. Tyler left the bathroom and approached a zoo worker. My friend was bit by a snake? Do you know where they would have taken her? he asked. Probably to the medical office behind Wild Africa. It's that way, said the worker, pointing east. Thanks, Tyler said and sprinted toward the office. Tyler reached the medical office in minutes, completely out of breath. Are you okay? asked the attendant. Yeah, my friend Allison, snake bite, coughed Tyler between gasps of air. She's doing well. Let me see if she's ready for visitors, said the attendant, who stepped away. After a minute, the attendant returned and ushered Tyler back to where Allison was. Allison sat up in bed. Hi, Tyler, she said. Hey, Allison. How are you? responded Tyler. Terrible. My head is killing me. But at least I am alive. <laughs> Allison chuckled. What brings you here? I just wanted to check in on a friend, said Tyler. No, you came for something else. Sure, you care about me, but that's not why you're here, stated Allison. Fine. I'm having a weird day, and I don't know if I'm just dreaming or what. I talked to a frog who convinced me to turn the snake that bit you into glass. That sounds crazy, right? asked Tyler. Yeah, that sounds crazy, replied Allison. But it's not. Somehow, I know you're telling the truth. Tyler then explained what happened when turning the snake to glass and asked Allison whether he could trust the frog. Definitely not. The viper was right. Frog is lying to you, said Allison. But what did he lie about, and why? questioned Tyler. Repeat to me everything the frog said to you, and I can tell you what was true, suggested Allison. Well, he said he could read my mind, and that a classmate would die if I didn't pull the fire alarm, said Tyler. That first one is partly true, so can probably read some of what's in your mind, but not all of it. But that second one was a lie. Nobody was going to die if you didn't pull the lever, explained Allison. What? But I saw you. You were totally dying. I saved your life, insisted Tyler. Two nopes. I totally wasn't dying, and you didn't save my life. That means the snake bite wasn't going to kill me, stated Allison. I actually think the snake bite gave me the ability to tell what's true or not. So the snake's venom turned you into a lie detector? Said, out, said Tyler. Yep, and I'd hate to put this new gift to waste, joked Allison. Let's go find some truth. After an intense debate with the zoo nurse, Allison was released. She and Tyler were on their way to the amphibians and reptiles building when they saw a bird perched on the snout of an alligator. Hello, little bird, thought Tyler. Oh, hi. I didn't know you could talk to me. How are you this lovely day? replied the bird cheerfully. I'm great, but I think the alligator you're standing on wants to eat you, said Tyler. Tyler began focusing on the alligator, imagining it was made of sand. His hands warmed a little, and he turned them toward the alligator, who turned to glass as it snapped at the little bird. That was close, said the bird. Thank you for saving my life. My pleasure, replied Tyler, watching the alligator melt back into its normal form. Tyler, we need to get out of here. There's a swarm of something heading our way, said Allison, pointing to a dark area in the sky. It's a swarm of hornets, exclaimed Tyler. Hurry to the bird sanctuary, chirped the bird. Tyler and Allison rushed to the bird sanctuary and entered through heavy doors at the same time the first hornets reached them. Several exotic birds swooped down and gobbled up the hornets. Stop, chimed a little voice. Don't eat me. It was the ladybug. Why am I not surprised to hear you, ladybug? said Tyler out loud so Allison could hear. You would be a tasty snack for my new friend, Bird. Bird hopped onto Tyler's head where the ladybug had embedded herself. And what's your name anyway? Why do all the animals call themselves frog or bird or ladybug? asked Tyler. I'll tell you the answer if you promise Bird won't eat me, pleaded the ladybug. How about you promise to call off the hornets and never send them after us again? Otherwise, your lunch, proposed Tyler. Okay, okay, I agree, no more hornets, 
said the ladybug. Whatever she said, she's telling the truth, interrupted Allison. What's your name, ladybug? asked Tyler. My name is Lydia. Animals don't share their names except with their closest friends because using the name of an animal gives you more influence over it, explained Lydia. So if I use your name, you have to obey? asked Tyler. No, but it does make disobedience hurt, so we all try to preserve our freedom by keeping our names to ourselves, said Lydia. That makes sense, said Tyler, looking over at Allison, who confirmed the truth of the ladybug statements. Do you want me to keep calling you ladybug? No, you can call me Lydia. I would like for someone nice like you to use it, responded Lydia. All right, Lydia, would you tell me why you were helping Frog? questioned Tyler. He has my cousins and threatened to eat them if I don't obey, cried Lydia. Maybe if I use his name, I can get him to stop, said Tyler. What's Frog's name, Lydia? His name is Felix, but he's very clever. You must be careful, said Lydia. I will be. Allison and I have a plan, assured Tyler. Tyler and Allison left the bird sanctuary and approached a woman with an official zoo vest and a name tag. Hello, Miss Erica. I know the amphibians and reptiles exhibit is closed, but we really want to see the fire-bellied snake. Is there any chance we can see it? asked Allison. I don't think so. We were told someone was bit by a snake today, so it's off limits, Erica explained. What if they showed it to us outside the building? Could someone do that? reasoned Tyler. Let me check, said Erica, who started typing a message on her phone. You're in luck. The reptile guru is about to feed some animals and you can watch. Great, said Tyler. The fire-bellied snake is my favorite because it has red scales like my red hair. Allison rolled her eyes at Tyler for such an over-the-top statement. A few minutes later, the reptile guy showed up and led them to a small area behind the amphibians and reptiles building. This is Ember. He's a fire-bellied snake who mostly eats slugs or other small animals. Can I hold him? asked Tyler. You can. Just make sure to keep your hands away from his face or he might think your finger is food, replied Bill. Tyler talked to the snake for several minutes, rubbing its head with a finger and letting it move from one arm to the other. Wow! Ember is way more interactive today than I've ever seen him, commented Bill. Can I see the chameleon? asked Allison. Sure, said Bill, but I have to put the snake back first. Tyler, it's time for Ember to get back to its habitat, said Bill. Okay, he told me he was eager to return, said Tyler. Bill chuckled and picked up the snake. See you soon, Tyler, said Ember as Bill carried the snake back into the building. While Bill was putting Ember the snake back into its enclosure, Tyler crept behind a statue of a giant tortoise and waited until Bill had left the building. I've come to turn the glass snake back into a viper, said Tyler, and you can't stop me. The frog in his cage hopped out from behind a leaf. Hissing sounds filled the room, and every snake and lizard climbed from its enclosure to surround Tyler. I disagree. I think I can stop you, said the frog. Is this how you treat your friends, Felix? Yes, I know your name, and I know it will be impossible for you to disobey my commands. Felix, let Lydia Ladybug's cousins go free, and I'll let you live threatened Tyler. Ha ha ha! My name isn't Felix. I would never tell anyone my real name. You humans are so gullible, said Frog, starting to hop rhythmically in his cage. Tyler templed his fingers and prepared to turn the frog into glass. One more chance, Frog, said Tyler, as heat radiated between his palms. Let Lydia's cousins go or be turned to glass right now. Those ladybugs aren't even in my cage. If I die, Chameleon will eat them, taunted Frog. Tyler turned his palms toward the frog, but nothing happened. Darn it! I just knew I shouldn't have had those fermented fish sauce dumplings for lunch. It must have taken away my power, said Tyler. Silly human boy! I stopped your spell with my own. Didn't you see me hopping around? 
Your powers can't touch me. Ha ha ha, cackled the frog. Snakes, kill this boy, commanded the frog. But instead of striking Tyler, the snakes climbed up to Frog's habitat. What did you do? exclaimed the frog. I just had a little chat with one of the snakes about what makes a good ruler. We agreed that you have some unappetizing qualities, said Tyler. You can't eat me, Frog said to the snakes now swirling around him. I'm poisonous, and you'll die if you try. Maybe they can't, but I can, said Ember, the fire-bellied snake from above. Quick as lightning, Ember struck Frog and devoured him whole. Thank you, cried a chorus of ladybugs in the chameleon's chamber. You saved us. Tyler opened the chameleon's cage and released the ladybugs. And now I need to unfreeze the viper, said Tyler. Tyler raised his palms to the glass snake and imagined cool water trickling over the snake's body. Slowly the glass melted back into a snake. Well done, the viper congratulated Tyler. You have freed us from that tyrant of a frog. Would you accept a gift as a token of my appreciation? Asked the snake. As long as it doesn't involve a puncture wound, joked Tyler. The snake began slithering in a hypnotic swirling pattern. Trace my head with one hand and my tail with the other, instructed the snake. Tyler traced the pattern with his hands and began to feel a tingling all over his body. Rainbow scales shimmered across his body in waves, then disappeared. What was that? asked Tyler. A form of protection, said the snake. You're going to need it. But how do I use it? questioned Tyler. Suddenly, a door from the outside opened. The security guard's large frame cast a shadow into the room. Who's in here? he yelled. Tyler sprinted through the doors on the other side of the building and joined a large group of kids wandering toward the primates. The guard was nowhere to be seen. Allison joined Tyler, and he recounted all that happened with the snakes and the frog. On the way out of the zoo, they passed through a gift shop and each bought a souvenir to remember the trip. As the bus lurched forward, Tyler and Allison each cradled a tiny glass frog in the palm of their hands. The one in Tyler's hand made a tiny hop.